Well, there are still a couple of weekends left in the summer. Maybe you're going to spend them on the water, as so many Canadians do, exploring the countless spectacular rivers and streams and lakes and oceans in our country. Well, my next guest did that in epic fashion by canoe. Look at this map. This is the journey that T.A. Loeffler and her partner Marion took. Started in Jasper, Alberta, through rivers, famous um, slave Mackenzie, Athabasca, reaching the Arctic Ocean. Oh my goodness, more than 3,000 kilometers over 90 days, ending up in Tuktoyaktuk in Northwest Territories. We had to talk to her about that. So, T.A. Loeffler with me this morning in Nunavik as she glamps and recovers. Good morning. Good morning, Heather. It's so great to talk to you. I love it. Uh, T.A. Loeffler is a professor uh, in the Human uh, Kinetics and Recreation Department at Mann Memorial University of Newfoundland, a specialty in outdoor recreation. But this is not just academic. You have brought this to life in spectacular fashion. What drew you to this odyssey? Uh, I saw a guidebook for the Mackenzie River about five years ago, and it just planted that seed. And I, uh, I had to actually wait till I wasn't teaching. I usually teach at Memorial in the summertime because of, of my specialty, and I'm on sabbatical leave this year, so it seemed the, the perfect time to go on a really long, long, <laughs> long trip. 90 days, most of them paddling. Okay, rapid-fire questions for you because I have so much I want to know. Most difficult okay. day, most difficult moment. Last last day paddling into Tuktoyaktuk, 16 hours in the canoe. 16 hours paddling. 16 hours paddling. We uh, knew we had we needed two good days of weather, and we only had. Uh, we started out on the first day, had a great day. The wind was down. We visited a few historic sites. Got to a place called Whitefish Station. Asked some folks there if they had a weather forecast. They said it's going to be great for the rest of the day. And I said, and tomorrow. They said, if you're going to Tuktoyaktuk, you better go tonight. So we had to have a whole second day's worth of paddling starting at 6 p.m. And uh, it was a pretty epic paddle. It was right on the edge of what we should be doing in a canoe. And we had to push hard. We hadn't slept that much the night before. And it was an incredible, incredible night. We arrived at 1.30 in the morning, cold, wet. Um, Wait a second, we have a picture of that. I was going to save that till the end, but we might as well show it now if we can, because no wonder you're celebrating with a little B-52 and a little uh, celebratory uh, <laughs> celebratory cheers there because you made it. That's a great photo to have at the end of it all. Indeed. <laughs> okay. It was... Uh... It was Go what ahead. you were going to say. It was, oh, i got to let it, you finish it, that. It was, it, it, it was everything. I mean, it was, it was hard. It was... Uh... It was a perfect way to end because it asked so much of us to actually get all the way to Tuck. So bad weather at times, for sure, but I want to focus on, on the good. I, I, what was the most jaw-dropping moment or scene or sight for you? Uh, most jaw-dropping moment was coming through an area on the Mackenzie River called the Ramparts. Uh, you've had, you're paddling along through what we kind of call the Green Tunnel, lots of conifer forest, epic Canadian landscape. And then suddenly the river uh, edges rise up and you have to aim and get into this tiny little tunnel. All of the Mackenzie is funneling into this tunnel through these two limestone walls. It's just an incredible uh, visual scene. Wow. What was the connection you're feeling to the land, to the water, to your country as you're experiencing this? Oh, it was, uh, it was amazing to be so immersed in the landscape of Canada. I've done a lot of international travel, and we made a special effort this year to travel within Canada. We've, we visited all three coasts, and to spend that much time connecting both with uh, the Canadian boreal forest and then with Canadian people along the way, that was also a huge part of this trip was we met so many wonderful, kind, generous Canadians who, who helped us out along the way. Isn't that amazing? We saw you, uh, Mary and your partner with whom you travel, and we're seeing in some of these shots. Uh, you're still talking at the end of this? At the <laughs> Abs Absolutely. Yeah. I think we, we only had one moment where we got a little bit testy okay. uh, along the way. I, I'm just, before I, I would to, to let it close, I, this might have changed the mood. Can I just show Delilah, who traveled along with you too? Who's Delilah? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Delilah is a, uh, a stuffed pig uh -huh. from Ikea, and we, we adopted her in February, and she started traveling with us, and 
I do a lot of outreach with schools and trying to teach folks about the Canadian or about geography in general and specifically as a fellow of the Royal Canadian Geographic Society about Canadian geography and I find Delilah is just a great ambassador for um, reaching out to children and, and young adults. <laughs> Delilah the Adventure Pig and T.A. and exactly. Marion, great Canadian adventurers. So nice to talk to you. I look forward to reading more about this. What a trip you've had. Thanks so much, Heather. T.A. Loeffler from Inuvik this morning.